Hey everybody, Brian the Pirate here. Today I'm going to talk you through the poisonous concoction of boing 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 build as I like to call it. It's a, it's a very very fun build to play, I'll, uh, I can confidently say that. I'm going to talk you through the many pros, some of the cons, there are a couple, and uh, the general play style of the build and of course take you through the, the path of building and some of the options that you'll have ahead of you when uh, playing this build. First and foremost, can you league start this build? Yes, you can. If, however, you are a very, very sweaty player who's very concerned about the early league economy, do obviously bear in mind this is a transfigured gem. So you're either going to have to be playing trade and have some small amount of wealth by the time you get to the required level to use or purchase um, poisonous concoction of bouncing or spam lab. If you're not that sweaty a player and you just like killing things and having fun, Yes, by all means, it's it's very comfortable to level up with. Uh, I think I started with just like Mirage, Archer, and I can't even remember what skill I used until I was able to equip Poisonous Concoction of Bouncing. And then that was it. I just leveled nice and easily through to maps. And then when we get to maps, mapping feels really, really good. The clear is fantastic. A lot of people were concerned when the uh, the gem was released about the... Uh, hitting enemies at random or whatever the wording is it isn't 100 percent random the the bounces do kind of snake towards mobs so if you've got a pack of mobs it will annihilate that pack of mobs in short if there's nothing nearby yes it will just go wherever the hell it likes and every now and then there will be a stray but you're throwing so many so fast and so frequently that it's it's not an issue you basically have for the most part, screen wide clear. So it's, it's really, really, really fun for mapping. Um, generally, it feels nice to play as well because of the Plague Bearer. In maps, Plague Bearer kills almost everything on its own. And then when you run out of Plague Bearer, you throw one flask at one pack and it's immediately topped up back to 100,000. Oh, sorry, 1,000K. Uh, so it's, it, it just feels super smooth. And you only have to drop maybe one or two flasks, depending on the pack that you find, where there's like a really beefy rare. And then that handles it and you move on. So it's it's very like drop and run, basically. It, it feels really, really good. When it comes to bossing, normal bosses, you can handle very, very easily. Uh, so far, I'd done uh, Elder, uh, Eater, Exarch, Katarina. Um, there's some bosses that I tried going in blind because there's some bosses I've never done before. I tried Cirrus blind. I got him to halfway and then he kept doing the circle of clones mechanic and then doing the pew pew laser and he did it three times back to back and it just wiped out all my portals, unfortunately. But that's um, like that's me not knowing the boss fight because I like to go in blind and learn it rather than reading a guide. But uh, otherwise, I'm pretty confident that I could do Cirrus. Um, I've yet to do uh, Shaper because I've been distracted by other things. But yeah, when it comes to bossing, the, the damage is easily there. Again, it's quite comfortable. And uh, it's, it's something you could definitely do farming for, at least normal bosses. Then there's the uber bosses. The problem with uber bosses is getting to them. <laughs> I, I suspect I could probably do the uber bosses. The problem is T17 maps. This build can do... T17 maps. This is with like a 10 div investment, by the way. However, it takes so long to do them that it just doesn't feel worth it. Um, I, I did the, the last T17 I did was the Citadel, I believe, with the blue laser um, expedition boss. Again, went in blind. I've never done that boss before in, in expedition either. And it took about 30 minutes to clear the map when i got to the boss the boss was fine but clearing the map one of the modifiers admittedly was 129 percent um maximum life on the monsters but just killing white mobs took forever and i get again i think that's more of a commentary on t17 maps rather than on the build and if you're not playing like the most metery of meta cook builds then you're basically locked out of ubers because of t17s 
hopefully that's something they address. I know they've kind of tried to thin out some of the modifiers um, recently with a patch, but I think hopefully for the next league, they just need to dilute it a little bit more. It feels like T17s are the hardest content in the game at the moment, at least to me. I suppose another one of the cons is physical damage. You have a high amount of evasion, so you're not frequently getting hit by physical damage, but you have little to no physical damage reduction. So if you do have a particularly big, beefy physical damage dealing mob and it manages to sneak a hit in, you may find on occasion that you will die. It will happen. Um, it's probably like once in every 10 maps, depending on how good a uh, player you are. I like to play high mobility builds, so I'm constantly moving around anyway. Um, but yeah, if you're the sort of person who usually tries to face tank things, Probably not the best idea, because like I said, if a physical hit comes through and manages to get past your evasion, you're going to be out of luck. Otherwise, you have uh, around about 100k uh, effective uh, hit pool. You could make that higher if you were to equip a lightning coil, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that when I show you the POB. Uh, you're capped at 83 fire res, 82 cold res. Uh, 83 lightning res, uh, currently 67 chaos res. You could get a lot more in there as well. I haven't put any tattoos in the build. I tend not to do that with my like league starter builds. Um, one, because I don't want to. And <laughs> I'm not that sweaty with my first character. I usually just want to get it good at mapping, which is what this build does. And then I invest substantially more into my follow-up uh, builds thereafter. However... If you decided to spend all the money getting perfect corruptions, perfect rolls on your gear, getting all the tattoos that you potentially want, I think this build could, go, could pretty much go all the way to everything everywhere uh, in this game. Um, that, again, that's something that's to be tested, and I would love to hear if, uh, if someone decides to push it that far. But uh, yeah, the primary focus of this build is just a, a really fun mapper and normal boss killer. And when I, again, to clarify, when I say normal boss, I mean not ubers. Okay, so the POB. For those of you not familiar with Poisonous Concoction, you cannot have a weapon. You can have a shield, but no weapon. You are basically unarmed. So that is why this slot here is empty. The rest of the build is very unique dependent, but they're all very achievable uniques, and some of them may even surprise you. Um, there are a couple of other items that I have tested and uh, I've seen other people test. I had people come into my chat going, oh, have you tried that? And the answer was like, yes, this has what I have on screen here. It's always ended up being better. And I'll explain uh, a lot of the variances that you could have in gear as well and why you may potentially want to change them. Uh, for the most part, you've got a shield that just has a lot of defenses. Um, this you can mix and match. Uh, I went with accuracy as the enchant because I just wanted to top it up and hit that 100% chance accuracy. Uh, you could also maybe, I don't know, throw in something that gives you more max res if you so wish. Uh, that's entirely up to you. But for the most part, the, the shield is pretty easy to get. You just want a big, beefy, evasion, defensive shield. Then there is the Devouring Diadem. This is uh, mandatory because you'll need it for the Eldritch battery that it provides. Uh, the Feast of Flesh is actually really, really nice. And of course, the Socketed Gems uh, reservation of 25% is really nice as well. Ideally, you want to get a roll with dexterity and int on it, and that's just so you can equip all your gems and max out to uh, the uh, the gem levels. Then you have Dendrobait. Dendrobait is what you want to equip if you want all the damage. So if you are doing maps, you're probably going to go with Dendrobait. If you want more EHP, you can get a lightning coil, and that uh, usually doubles it, but uh, I think I've changed the setting somewhere. But basically, you can get a lightning coil, which will give you some more EHP. Uh, but in this case, I prefer using Dendrobate, and it just gives lots and lots of damage. Another reason you're going to want the Int, by the way, on the Diadem, is to make sure that you get the 20% increased poison duration if you have at least 150 intelligence. Uh, for the gloves, I've gone with Snake Bite, so technically this is like a, a Frenzy Stacker. You get six Frenzy Charges. Um, a lot of people were asking if uh, Asnaf's Gentle Touch would be better. The answer is no. No, it's not. <laughs> I tried it. Uh, some people didn't believe me. I was like, here's the POB. Go test it out yourself. And then they tested it, and they were like, oh, yeah, no, you're right. Snake Bite is better, which is super cheap. Um, you could also, obviously, with it being loads of uniques, you could probably get a, uh, a corrupted version of Snake Bite. Um, I've got Ralakesh Boots, for example. Ideally, if I was prepared to spend about 30 div, 
I'd get plus one endurance charge because, you know, more defense is always nice. And likewise, you could probably do something uh, similar with snake bite. Play around with what makes, uh, what feels good to you when it comes to uh, implicits. But otherwise, it's like 1C for a, a pair of snake bites. It's uh, nice and cozy. Um, next, the amulet. Pretty self-explanatory. Plus one, plus all. Uh, chaos, bit of regen life. Uh, life multiplier. It's lots of damage. Go ham with it. Uh, you want retaliation as the anointment. Uh, it mostly just gives you lots of damage. If again you're you're going for like T17 maps and you want to try and sacrifice some damage for more EHP, you could, but it's going to make the map process take longer. If you're just trying to do the one map so you can unlock the map device, then you may feel a bit more cozy with. Uh, anointing something that just gives you more defense but otherwise uh, retaliation is the way to go uh, the ring ice fang orbit is a bit of a meme but it, it, again it just makes the build feel a little bit cozy so it gives you like a fat stack of damage uh, with the 50 or i think believe i believe the cap is 60 percent increased damage with poison i just whenever i put items into my pob i always let it go with the middle of the road so it's kind of realistic so i i know what the leveling process is going to feel like but you can get a 60 percent very cheap again probably for for 1c because it's ice fang orbit um it's also nice that it shatters the corpses especially with this league where everything ever has detonate dead and you're sick of hearing the, the sound whenever you're about to get nuked by uh, all the corpses because there are substantially less corpses because they shatter uh due to the poison damage so that's really nice uh, you've got uh, a circle of nostalgia. I mean, it's pretty obvious. You're playing a poison build. It gives you chaos damage. Um, you get it with your Herald of Agony. You get some chaos resistance with your Herald of Agony up as well. Not much more to explain there. Uh, for the uh, Stygian Vice, you basically just want to get all the flask stuff. You're playing a Pathfinder. Um, sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. So just all the flask stuff. Bit of life, bit of res, tops it up. And then for the Jewel... Something that just gives you a few attributes to, again, make sure you hit, like, the uh, strength and int uh, amounts that you need. Bit of life, bit of accuracy, bit of extra damage while holding a shield. Works out pretty great. For the flasks, these are actually supposed to be... I can't remember what the top tier version is. I've gone with Perpetual for now, but there is actually... Uh, I think it's Rationed. Maybe Rationed, I can't remember. That is, uh, is better, more appropriate. But you want a life flask... You might want to do two life flasks um, and drop the quicksilver if you're doing bosses because you run out of life flasks. Because no matter how much you try to reduce it, it doesn't apply to the eight charges used when you throw it. And having uptime on your flasks doubles your damage just to, uh, to show you no flask. It, it drops the damage substantially. So you do want to uh, make sure that you've got uptime on your flasks as much as possible. So I do recommend having two divines and just rolling them really, really high so you get the 4, 8, 9, 6 uh, life on them. Otherwise, if you're just doing wrapping, you can get away with throwing a quicksilver just to have a bit of movement speed whilst you're running around. It isn't necessary, though. That's more of a quality of life thing. Uh, the ruby flask is to give you all the res and to give you more max res. Likewise for the topaz. Taste of hate is uh, pretty self-explanatory. It does exactly the same as these two. And it gives you more damage mitigation because it's converting some of the damage to cold. Then you want a Brutal Restraint. It's a very specific one, but it's every time I've seen it on the market, it has been remarkably cheap. Um, you might be able to throw in a different number, but 6218 is the one that I went with. And the reason for that is because it gives you some pretty beefy stats. It gives you four max life here. Uh, you get dexterity on some of the other nodes. You get 20% more poison damage here. You get another 20% more poison damage there. Another 20% more poison damage there. You get another 4% max life there. And you also then get alchemist's genius here, which is really, really nice. So um, I did try a couple of other brutal restraints. And some of them obviously gave you more life. Some of them gave you more damage, but less life. This was the the perfect balance. So six two one eight, uh, Dakara in the Akhara of Asenef words. Um, Jewel is the one that you want. It's uh, it's really cozy. I managed to pick it up. I think, like I said, for I think it was a div. Um, every time I saw it listed, it was usually for a couple of hundred chaos to a div. So it's uh, definitely the way to go there. 
Um, otherwise, otherwise, when it comes to items, I would also potentially look at the... Uh, where's it gone? I'm blind. Amulet. Uh, so the amulet, you've got a couple of options. Whilst leveling, I went with Malagaros, because as I mentioned, we're a frenzy stacker. Malagaros is stupid cheap. Um, you, again, you'll, you'll probably find one just naturally whilst you're plodding about, but uh, you can get one for 1c very, very easy. I've seen a lot of people who are playing this build using Fury Valve. Now, the reason they're using Fury Valve is for one very, 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 very specific reason. It's the two additional projectiles. The splitting doesn't work. Um, if you use Fork, it doesn't work. The Fury Valve splitting doesn't work. Nothing like that. It will always be this one chain of um, flasks bouncing around. It's purely for the two additional projectiles. Now, the way the skill works is... Excuse me. <clears throat> it bounces quite quickly. And that's great. And, it, and the more bounces you get, the more it hits. And obviously, the more you're hitting, the more damage output you're doing. However, depending on the type of content you're doing, that's not necessarily a good thing because the more chains you have, the longer the animation, so the longer it takes to apply that damage in the first place. If you're just mapping, it's better to like what I call front load the damage because at the end of the day, if you're killing something in one hit, who cares if you've got the potential to hit it another 11 times thereafter? Does that make sense? So I've personally found that Malagaros is better uh, Replica Dragonfang is, uh, is better and is actually what I'm currently using. And then eventually, you want the Beef Castle Amulet, which is plus one, plus one, and then you can get some other stats on there as well. But I personally prefer the Dragonfang over Fury Valve. If I was doing, like, uber bosses, maybe I would go to Fury Valve. Um, I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison to see what would actually be faster. Uh, I imagine they're probably pretty much on par, because, again, the damage... You lose quite a fair bit um, if you go from Fury Valve to Replica, that's 400k damage. And then if you go to the Beef Castle Amulet, you get another 200 on top of that. So it, it depends on the content you're doing is what I'm going to say there. I'm personally a fan of Replicas and eventually I would want to get the, uh, the perfect rare. But mileage will vary on, on the content you're doing and how you feel about playing the build. Uh, otherwise, let's have a look at the uh, the skills. So, Poisonous Concoction. Again, there is some slight variance here depending on the, co the content you're doing and whether or not you're wearing Fury Valve, funnily enough. So, generally, more, per more chains in the, uh, the, the... More chains in the chain. The more you chain, the better. I can't words today, forgive me. But um, if you're front-loading damage, then you're probably going to want to get uh, Vicious Projectiles, where you're just killing everything in one hit anyway. But otherwise, you can, of course, get um, Volley, Greater Volley, which will just add a lot more projectiles to it, which is probably going to be get better for your single target against beefier bosses, because then you're applying your poisons quicker, because it's hitting them more frequently. But if you're just mapping, I recommend Vicious Projectiles. Everything here was really cheap. I made this build for like 10 div, just to clarify. Um, again, to reiterate, if you do invest 50 or up to 100, you could really min-max the crap out of it with your implicits on your unique items. Uh, but otherwise, everything else is pretty cheap and easy to get. When it comes to the auras, these all go into the, uh, the helmet with the 25% reservation. Uh, you want to get your Herald of Agony. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Precision. Mostly for the accuracy, you don't actually care about the crit. Uh, as you can see, the uh, crit chance is only 20%. It's not something you're really bothered about. Sure, it, it's kind of nice to have it there, but it's, it's, it's supplemental. You, you're, you're all about the, the accuracy on this one. Grace, pretty self-explanatory. You want all the evasion. Malevolence, again, self-explanatory. It's to do with uh, dot damage. You want all the dot damage. Shield charge, because you're rocking around punching people in the face and it's good for movement. Faster attacks because you want it to be uh, nice and uh, responsive. Immortal call, cast when damage taken. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. It stops you from dying. <laughs> Plague bearer is uh, basically your de facto map clearer, especially if you're doing lower tier maps. I mean, in tier 16s, it does kill everything on its own. Um, you don't have to get awakened increased area effect. 
it's just again a quality of life thing uh, then you've got despair that's for your bossing or whenever you come against a, a beefy rare drop the curse on it have a good time and the enhances for the plague bearer as well i had a spare slot and i was like what could i put in there and they i pure beat it and it was like oh enhance gives it more damage <laughs> that will do uh ancestral protector is just so you can throw things a bit quicker most of the time you're not going to drop it down it's pretty much again versus bosses you can just drop it down so you can just throw flasks a bit quicker and build up that poison a lot faster as well when it comes to the tree we've already seen some of the tree so you got your brutal restraint over here um the the nodes are well there's a lot of travel uh, there is a fair chunk of travel you see you've got the top end up here and then your bottom end up here um, for the most part, it is a lot of damage. Could you probably get more damage with Cluster Jewels? Maybe. I did look at Cluster Jewels a little bit. Um, it didn't seem to be worth the time investment. I think you could probably inch a couple more, like, thousand DPS. But, eh. <laughs> probably not really worth. But for the most part, you want to get, like, your, uh, your increased auras, of course, and reservation at the top end. Uh, we are, as I mentioned, a Frenzy Stacker, so we've gone down here as well. Uh, more charges with, uh, more damage rather, with charges. We're wear wearing Ralakesh boots, so we're always at maximum charges. You've got your defense. you got your life. All that shenanigans. More defenses with a shield, because you're rocking the shield. More defense, more life. More attack speed, more accuracy. The removal of the penalty from armor is actually quite nice because you're probably not going to be rocking a quicksilver but uh not absolutely necessary do recommend it though to just cap out at 100 percent hit chance and whatnot though uh, otherwise you're of course getting a load of uh poison multipliers and such we've got some more life i whacked in the strength one there just so i could top it up i could probably remove that honestly and just lower some of the gems because it's mostly thing for the like the immortal call and uh, your shield charge and stuff like that. You could just rock those at a lower level and whack this somewhere else into a mastery or some sort. Then you've got uh, long shot. Honestly, I'm not sure how effective long shot is because I don't really know how it's calculated. Is the honest answer? Maybe maybe someone in the comments will be able to uh, to work it out because the way the chain works, I don't know if it's actually calculating the distance traveled out of the chains or if it's just one long projectile like i said it, it might not work i'm honestly not sure it was really difficult to tell and sometimes it bounces on the spot as well it's a bit of a collision issue it works to your benefit um, but you may see sometimes in the gameplay you'll throw a flask and it'll just chain directly on the spot which is fantastic for bossing but uh yeah it's that one i'm a bit iffy on uh, otherwise, you want to get, obviously, your uh, flask effects up and uh, increase durations, reduce charges, etc. Your damage over time, your faster attack speeds. We've got some more poison-based stuff over here. Um, the very last wheel I would go for, so if you're not the sort of person who pushes to uh, level 100, it would probably be this one. It does give you a chunk of damage, like you would lose 325,000 damage if you didn't have it. Um, but yeah, th this is probably the very last wheel that I would go for. Everything else you want to pretty much rush beforehand and of course you want all the the frenzy charges as well so if you see those knocking about make sure you grab them and uh yeah that's pretty much it for the tree when it comes to the ascendancies um again i think it's going to be pretty self-explanatory you're a pathfinder so you do pathfinder things master toxicist words are hard um <laughs> obviously for the wither for the most part um sorry not the wither for the that's uh, nature's reprisal that is what you want for the wither this is just for the increased damage during a flask effect, which is all the time you will pretty much permanently have your flasks up. Extra charges for that very same reason. Magic utility flasks applied to you have 30% increased effect because you have charges all the time. Now, I suppose a question that may be asked is, but what if Mage Blood, Brian? Well, if Mage Blood, yeah, you could probably rock a different ascendancy. I would probably actually go with Raider because frenzy charge sacking if that's the case i haven't tried it again because i don't want to <laughs> i'm done with this build it it does what it needs to do um i would be really interested if someone does try it with a mage blood and as a raider do please let me know if that ends up working out really really well um 
mostly for like few future builds because it is fun to play it really is a fun to play build i can do tier 16 maps juiced up to all high heavens and it's just a really really good smooth time i am working on an uber killer at the moment because the way tier 17 maps function i'm insane and still avoiding going with the meta because that's how i roll apparently so if you're interested in that i'm doing a firestorm of meteors totems build it's just turned uh, level 75 and it already does as much damage as this build <laughs> basically i'm level 75 and i'm doing tier 16 so i jumped into one last night before i finished uh, my stream i stream on twitch.tv brian the pirate by the way if you are interested in watching that gameplay as i'll probably be playing that for the next week or so but um but yeah definitely recommend this build if you if you like being able to just throw run throw run and just constantly moving this is definitely a build to try out if you like face tanking things and standing on the spot and you're not the most agile of player and that's not me throwing shade just some people don't like clicking out all over the place whereas i'm i'm really into that um then i i would probably at least go with the more defensive stuff like lightning call etc and just building as much ehp as possible and sacrificing some damage especially if you're only going to be using it as a league starter for mapping uh but yeah that, that's pretty much it for the poison concoction of boing 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 if you liked the video or the build do please subscribe for more in the future like the video it helps the algorithm gods and as i mentioned before you can follow me on twitch.tv forward slash brian the pirate that's it from me thank you for watching farewell i'll remember you